artists around the world go beyond classic painting and sculpting to make art that is surprising and more exciting to look at. You might have seen art made out of actual pencils and crayons. Recyclable materials or trash. Plastic bags. Silverware. Chopsticks. Coffee. Jello. Or even bubble gum, just to name a few. This week we challenge you to find a new way to make art. Here are some examples of what you could do. Hi, it's Mrs. Frobase, and today I'm going to create my own homemade painting tools and brushes with objects that I'm looking for around my house and outside in nature. Let's see what I can find. I found a pine cone, a feather I taped to a stick, a twig with lots of little ends, a piece of a pine tree, a fork, a sponge and a clothespin, an old toothbrush, a dandelion, a clip and a pointy sponge, an old gift card, some Legos, a straw I glued a pom-pom to, a paper towel I bunched up with a rubber band, twigs and a twisty tie, and a stick. Let's see what I can do with these. and I'm just creating some really interesting textures and marks and having fun doing it. I'm not really sure what I'm creating as a picture. Maybe it's something abstract. I'm using some tempera paints for this. Acrylic paints are also nice opaque type paints to use for this as well. Or it is springtime, great time for mud painting if you don't have paints. Next, I'm gonna try using some of my new tools with water paints. lesson on unusual art tools and techniques, Mrs. Hall chose to make my own paint with food dye. Keep in mind, food dye can stain, so have an adult help you and also put down a placemat. First, find some containers that you can mix the paint in. Add a small amount of water to each. Keep one container as just water so you can clean your brush in between colors or if you made some of your own art tools, have some extra supplies ready. Next, add one or two drops of coloring into each cup. You can even try mixing two colors together. Give a careful stir with your brush or even your homemade tool. You're ready, go ahead and try painting your picture. Have fun. You will need to find regular, not permanent markers. Grab something to paint on and something to paint with. Begin drawing with your markers. Ooh, that won't do. Make sure it's a juicy marker. You can use more than one color. I'm going to add some green. When you're finished adding color, it's time to dip your brush in the water 
and watch your marker turn into paint. I'm going to use crayons with my marker painting this time. I'm starting off by drawing my shape. It's time to add some details, maybe some fun patterns. This paper is very thin. I'm going to move it to the side and create a palette on this wax paper. That way I don't have to put my wet paintbrush right onto the thin printer paper. Instead, I will wet the marker and paint right onto my paper as if I were using watercolor paints. Just like with regular paints, make sure to rinse your brush carefully between colors. Can you see how the crayon is showing through the paint? We call that a resist. Today I'm going to show you how to make a monoprint, which is a form of printmaking where the image can only be made once. The supplies you're going to need are aluminum foil, regular markers, paper, water, and something to wet your paper with. It could be a sponge, a spray bottle, or even just your hand. I like to use a permanent marker to create a window that's the same size as my paper. This helps me know where to place my colors. I start with the lighter colors and then use the darker colors, making sure that my hand does not smear any of the work that I'm doing. Now I'm ready to wet my paper. I dip my sponge in the water, or even just my hand, turn my paper over, rub, and voila. Even if you don't have a big piece of foil, find a small scrap, wrap it around a piece of cardboard, and you get yourself a smaller stamp that you can layer on top of something you've already done. Try drawing a picture with a permanent marker first, and then create your mono print. And you too can have a bad case of the stripes. Boys and girls, this is Mrs. Lucas from Cheston and March Elementary, and today we're going to make a found paper art project. So you're going to need some paper, find any kind of scrap paper around the house. I'm choosing to use some candy paper, and I'm wrapping it up into little balls, and now I'm going to create a drawing. And I'm making a sun on my paper. Now I know a sun doesn't really have a face, but my son has a face because I'm trying to be super creative. I'm adding some nice warm colors to my son. Remember we talked about the warm colors a couple of weeks ago. They are red, orange, and yellow. So when you get done coloring in your face, then you can add your candy papers. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. I chose to make art out of recyclable materials. I used cereal boxes, a milk jug lid, and the round plastic base. I also used scissors and hot glue. First, I cut out organic shapes of different sizes. Then, I placed the lid in the center of the round base. After that, I carefully glued the cardboard pieces around the lid to make a flower. While I worked on my art, my youngest daughter had fun making a robot. How cool is that? Recycle. Our planet thanks you. Don't forget to share your work in CC. 
saw if you're in kindergarten, first or second grade, and in Google Classroom for third, fourth, and fifth grade. Have fun!